my great and wonderful dear friends, lovers of freedom all over the world, you're welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your location. Our Prime Minister was on its Twitter space today, being the 1st of December 2023, where he addressed the dear friends and also declaration of Biafra Nation, where he made some points and uh, tougher ahead in coming days and weeks in Biafra land. I'd like you to listen to the broadcast and we'll come back to talk. Thank you. Strategizing to make sure we evict this terrorist imbalance from Biafra land so that eviction magnitude of what we are going to be doing there may be different because of the civilians. But yes, we are putting them under consideration. Another thing about uh, another thing about that is that we are hunting down anybody that is carrying arms under Nigeria within the upper land. Those people who have killed our children in Ihiala, killed our young men in Udi. Those people have been murdering us for decades and now we have risen with arms to defend our land. I don't think car should be a problem. I don't think the, the car should be a problem. Uh, that is not what I'm here for this evening. Our target is not just car. Our target is to make sure we neutralize terrorists, which Nigeria police, including them themselves, are terrorists. They have confirmed it today that the military acted like Boko Haram. As if he doesn't know that military are Boko Haram. The Inspector General of Police of the Zoological Republic of Nigeria, the Islamic State of Nigeria, has this morning confirmed that Nigerian military acted like Boko Haram by attacking Adamawa police station. Now, if it is only when they attack Adamawa police station, they become Boko Haram, what we, are we going to call them for having burnt villages, killed women and children in Imo State, in Anambra State, another part of Biafra land? If ordinary attacking a police station make them act like Boko Haram, what Boko Haram does? Boko Haram attack children, Boko Haram kill children and behead them, Boko Haram kill women, Boko Haram burn communities in order to force the people into the Islamic State. That's exactly what the Nigerian army terrorists have done to Biafra land. So, and the ITP is aware of the attack in Biafra. He has not addressed them that they acted like Boko Haram, but he romances with them. He went with them to the National Assembly to complain about my activities, stopping them from carrying out that Boko Haram Act in Biafra land. And he supported and signed his signature by accompanying this particular army to the National Assembly. Today, the same thing I prevented the army from doing in Biafra land, they have done it to one of his stations in Adamawa, and now he's crying that they acted like Boko Haram. Is that not hypocrisy? The same thing that Samanepa prevented them, including the Nigeria police, from doing in Biafra land. They have done it to just one police station. One police station. And he is shouting. They acted like a Boko Haram. So what is he going to say about all the atrocities that the Nigeria army have committed in Biafra land, which led us to build our own army to fight them, that we are fighting them today? What is he going to call them? We have our own army, our target is any military man from Nigeria in Biafra land. Because these are criminals, these are terrorists who have killed our people for many years. An ordinary police station, the Nigeria Inspector General of Police is shouting. Do you know how many children the Nigeria army have killed in Biafra land? Do you know how many markets, how many families have been rendered useless in Biafra land by the Nigeria army? Over 40,000 have been killed. 11,000 missing, 13,000 detained in different parts of Nigeria illegally. They are cutting our children's hair. Anybody that have hair, they cut the hair, intimidating them, and already they want to force you to live into Islam inside Islamic State in your own land. And none of these people, including the Nigeria police, have complained about the atrocities. We carry arms now to fight them and we'll be fighting them till they are no more we will soon start visiting their barracks it's an offensive that will happen very soon and uh, so my our our interest here is not about burning cars or anything our interest is to make sure that those carrying guns will never use that gun again in their land to kill our children and women
Biafra has been restored. What is remaining is a complete declaration that will be defended. And before that happens, there are many things that we need to put in place, which we are doing day and night. If at this point you are still asking Samonekba, when is the Biafra coming? You say you are declaring Biafra in 2023. I want you to recount the achievement of the Biafra Republic government in exile under the leadership of Simon Epa, what we have achieved in 2023, and ask yourself that question again, and you will look very stupid. We have been able to form government in exile in 2023. In 2023, we have formed the de facto government. In 2023, we have launched Biafra Liberation Army. In 2023, we launched Biafra Navy, we launched Biafra Air Force, we launched the forces of Biafra. In 2023, we adopted Helsinki Declaration, which is the constitution of Biafra. In 2023, we had a convention in Finland where Biafra people gathered from all over the world as delegates to vote on the Biafra Charter, which is a living document subjected to amendment. In 2023, we have created 40 states of Biafra. And believe me, many more states will come because we are not done yet. In 2023, not only that we created state, we also brought a redesigned and a redrawn Biafra map to reflect the current situation and the current demography of Biafra. In 2023, we started engaging officially Nigeria state in a guerrilla warfare on self-defense. In 2023, we officially and publicly engaged the Nigerian terrorist army and we are neutralizing them on daily basis. It has never happened before in the history of Biafra, except after the war. In 2003, we publicly and openly made sure that Nigeria doesn't kill again in Biafra land and go free. So, if you look at those things I've mentioned, and those ones I've not even mentioned, are you still going to challenge Simon Epa that Biafra has not been restored in 2023? Is it when I open my mouth and say, I have declared Biafra, everybody, here, come now. Is that when you think that Biafra has come? Biafra declaration is not about mouth pronouncement. It's about putting every structure in place. It's about putting every mechanism and measures in place to shape the map and the structure of Biafra. In 2023, we have designed the economic viability of Biafra. In 2023, we have kicked off the Biafra Urban Development Project. In 2023, we've made a lot of impact globally. In 2023, the Biafra Awareness gained the highest momentum in the history of Biafra since after the war. In 2023, we made the Nigeria Terrorist Army to cry on the floor of National Assembly. It has never happened in the history of Nigeria. In 2023, those who are serving as the agent of Nigeria, benefiting from the corrupt entity called Nigeria, openly called for persecution, execution, and the kidnapping and arrest of Sakonekba because they know that this is a different thing from what they have seen in their entire life. 
in 2023, they called for the arrest of Simon Ekwa and called for the release of Mazin Nandika. Confusion. In 2023, after they have used many years to plan the kidnap of Mazin Nandikano, they have come to say Mazin Nandikano is a saint. He's a very gentle man. He's a nice person. But just two years ago, they kidnapped this nice person from Kenya. Two years ago, they tortured him for eight days. Two years ago, he was an evil man. Two years ago, they called him terrorist. Two years ago, he was everything evil to them. Two years ago, they spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. They kidnapped him and put him into a private jet from Kenya to Nigeria. Two years ago, Mazinam the Kano was everything evil to Nigeria, including to Anezen Ibu and all of them. Two years ago, he was the only problem of Nigeria. Two years ago, he was the only person that constituted all manner of insecurity in Nigeria. He was the one who is more deadlier than Boko Haram. He was everything that Nigeria don't want to see today. As Simon Ekba take the Biafra impression to the next level, the same people are now calling him as a Namdekano, the most sensible person. These are hypocrites, these are devilish people, these are criminals, that only thing they want to do is to give dog a bad name in order to kill it. They have given back that name to Mazen Namdekano. They themselves were the one who condemned Mazen Namdekano. The same people today, they have seen that Yes, indeed, someone actually followed this footstep of Mazin and Kano and ready to drag all of them to Biafra land. So that I remember who are not them. When we get to Biafra land, we will treat their fuck up. We will treat their fuck up very well. Today, the same people who gave the bad name to Mazin and Kano in order to be kidnapped, they slandered his name, blackmailed him to other ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. All of them today has come to say that Mazin Amdekano is very sensible. Okay, my beautiful people, we've come to the end of today's broadcast. You've heard it from our, from our Prime Minister, Simon Ekba, where he talks about uh, Mazin Namdekano and also the declaration of Biafra freedom. He also talks about the, um, the zoo army in Biafra land, the evil they are committing, that they will not go scot-free. He will make sure that he evicts and they flush all of them out from Biafra land. We all know our Prime Minister is talk and do. What he says is what he does. So, the Zoo Army be warned. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye.